Well, I get to uh, talk about the rehab uh, right now, but first thing I'd like to uh, recognize Myron. He's been a marginal friend for a few years, <laughs> and I've known Myron well over 30 years, and the you know, guy's getting old, so I try to invite him back every couple years to get some of this knowledge, but we're, we're hoping that uh, he sticks around a little while, but Myron a couple years mentioned about you know, he'd like to work on his bucket list. I thought, well, we better hurry because we don't have long. So, <laughs> a couple years ago, we talked about going over to Scotland, and we actually did it last year. So, last year at this time, we went over to Scotland. We're lucky enough to play the old course. So, Myron Sports an 8.7 USGA, and that's pretty darn good. But I tried to get, <laughs> I tried to get good pictures of Myron on the fairway. And, these bunkers over there were all over, and Myron worked hard at them, and he actually got pretty good at them, and you know, the caddies, you know, were constantly waiting for him, and then he got to be the big bunker, so I really never got really good pictures of Myron on the fairway. It took us a while to get around, but the 17th hole at St. Andrews is known as the road hole, and this was probably the scariest thing I've ever seen, but if you know Myron Owl or have ever golfed with him, Myron has a well-defined, well-crafted slice. <laughs> and this fairway is not where you see the people off in the distance to your left-hand side. It's actually over that <laughs> sign is where the fairway is. Well, very close to that sign and over that is a hotel right there. And like I said, Myron has a very well-defined slice. I quick took the picture and turned away because I'll leave it up to your imagination where this ball went. <laughs> so we're going to talk about clinical practice. <laughs> so we have the clinical practice guidelines. And again, Myron had to mention this. So uh, Physical Therapy Journal really tries to look at what is the current best evidence for plantar fasciitis. They first did this in 2008. They revised it in 2014. They are looking at more than likely a review now, and I would suspect in 2018, 2019, we'll see updated guidelines. So they do grade the evidence, and again, A through F, again, we'd like to see a lot of good A and B evidence with the type of things we're doing for treatment. Manual therapy, strong evidence now, 2008, very inconclusive, but anything we can do to increase that mobility at that foot and ankle has strong evidence. So in your practice now, manual therapy should be one of the top things that we're doing for these plantar fasciitis patients. We already have talked a lot about the stretching. That has gotten very strong grades throughout the years. And again, <laughs> we'll go over that briefly. Myron mentioned about the taping, especially now the anti-pronation taping to make a case for orthotics. In terms of the Ford orthosis, again, Myron recommended that. Again, good, strong evidence for the orthotics, but also night splints. And again, a one to three months program, especially with those people that have pain with their first steps in the morning. And again, this can go one to three months. In terms of other recommendations, electrotherapy, not real good evidence. They recommend using those prior interventions, the stretching, the orthotics, those type of things. I do not, or we do not have in our clinic, the low-level laser. Um, I don't know, I'd love to talk to people who use it, how it's working. Right now, it's just very early studies, and I would suspect that's what they're going to be looking at in this next review. Phonophoresis, also, just very s small study group, again, very weak evidence. And dry needling is another one right now, very limited evidence to support it. So why gastroc recession? Well, most people respond quite well to plantar fasciitis treatment conservatively. At least 90% do fairly well with it. But 88% of non-neuropathic patients in the G. Giovanni study with midfoot or forefoot symptoms presented, presented with a gastroc contraction, exactly what Dr. Carlson talked about. So current evidence does support the gastroc recession for regaining that dorsiflexion range of motion. So these are kind of fun rehab patients, and usually we get them with other cases, midfoot fusions, other type of things where these people are non-weight-bearing. 
So when we see them in the clinic, again, if it's just a gastroc recession only, they are weight bearers tolerated, but in a can boot two to four weeks. The exercises are typically non-weight bearing to begin with. So we do a lot of stretching, gastroc and long sitting, the sitting soleus. We'll try to work the muscle a little bit, but typically non-weight bearing. We may continue this longer if again, fusion type activities or other procedures that we got to pull on the weight bearing. For the weight bearing activities, once we get four to six weeks, that's when we get into our weight bearing stretches. Dr. Chad Carlson mentioned, we really like to see those people who have that uh, pes planus, that flat foot to invert the foot when they stretch for both the gastroc and soleus. We also start some weight bearing strengthening. Now one thing to watch here a little bit is evidence does show that power does not return to normal levels. So these people do have to work a little bit to get that gastroc power back and we'll progress from single to double leg activities. But in terms of our challenges, uh, this was a study done in 2017 and they looked at just a very large pool of hospital records or clinic records of 819,000 patients diagnosed with plantar fasciitis, accounting for over 5 million visits. 7% of those received a physical therapist evaluation. So hopefully we get to see these people a little bit more. They do respond very well with the stretching and things we have to offer. Thank you. <laughs>